Welcome to Boy State News. I'm Riley Blissmer. And I'm Kendall Schreier. For our first segment, Boy Staters were visited by Congress member John Thune. Presenting those highlights, we will now go to Don Weigel. On Tuesday afternoon, Senator John Thune shared his experience at Boy State and how that influenced his political career. We were able to meet up with John Thune before he spoke to the rest of Boy State and asked him a few questions, one of which was about what can be done to fix Social Security. Uh, there are a number of things that you could do that don't impact Social Security recipients today or those who are nearing retirement age. There's always a concern we talk about Social Security, is Social Security going to be cut for seniors? And you don't need to do that to, to rescue the program, but the fact of the matter is it's not sustainable in its current form. So for people your age, uh, you're not going to see it if we stay on this current path. Now there are a couple of things that have been suggested, one of which is to gradually phase in and increase in the retirement age. where people are living longer, they're working longer, they're being productive longer, uh, that would be uh, one way of dealing with it. There's, uh, there, I think there are other ideas that are out there, but I guess what I would say is you have to restructure the um, demographics, or I should say the, uh, the, actuary, uh, the actuarial elements of the program to fit the current demographics of America. And right now, that, that is the case. We've got uh, too many people that are drawing out for the number of people that are paying in, and eventually you can't keep doing that. So uh, one way to address that would be through a gradual uh, increase in the retirement age. And uh, I would start there, and then I'm open to some other ideas that people have. Thune started by talking a little about his Boy State experience. I do want to, I appreciate the, the chance to come to Boy State every year. Um, I was a Boy Stater in 1978, so 40 years ago. Um, and it's hard to believe it's been that long, but somebody was, you know, they were saying there's still no air conditioning in the dorms, so some things don't change. But um, I was in the uh, city of New York. Anybody here from the city of New York? Okay. Yeah! So anyway, it's been a long time uh, since I was here, but it was a good week and um, got a chance to, to enjoy and try a lot of things, learn a little bit about uh, government politics and, and uh, you know, there's some fun extracurricular activities along the way too, so I hope it's a good week for you. Thune said that he didn't plan on becoming a politician when he was growing up. Unlike other politicians, Thune's political career began at a basketball game. We had this tournament in my hometown every year, it's still going. It's the longest running tournament of its kind in South Dakota. Uh, as a Thursday, Friday, Saturday basketball tournament called the Jones County Invitational. And I was a freshman playing some varsity ball, so Friday night I got into the game. And um, I had six attempts at the free throw line, I made five of them, right? So the next day, uh, Saturday, I'm in our, on our Main Street, there used to be a department store there, it isn't there anymore, but I was buying something at the checkout counter. And this guy in the line behind me taps me on the shoulder. And I turn around and he says, I noticed you missed one last night. And I'm like, who's this smart aleck? Like, I made five out of six, you know, I'm a freshman, give me a break, right? And he introduced himself as Congressman Jim Abner. And I got out of graduate school at the University of South Dakota. He offered me a job. By that time, he got elected to the United States Senate. The floor was then open for boy staters to come up and ask Thune questions ranging from political concerns to questions about having a career in the political field. At the end of his time with Boy State, Thune was presented with a special edition Boy State t-shirt. For the full interview with John Thune, check out the South Dakota Boy State Facebook page. For Boy State News, I'm Don Weigel. Thanks, Don. We will now go to our very own anchorman, Riley Blissmer, with highlights and an interview of Dusty Johnson. Tuesday evening, Dusty Johnson visited with Boy Staters and spoke about the importance of delayed gratification and impulse control. His message, if you can hold yourself back from one cookie now, you will get two cookies later. You will be given a choice about whether you want to do what is good and proper and hard, or whether you want to do what is easy and comfortable. And if you choose what, what's behind door number one, more often, you're just going to have an awesome life. I'll just tell you, those of you, every single one of you who can do that, who can delay gratification, will be successful. In your A candidate for South Dakota's open house seat, Dusty's interactions on the campaign trail have varied, in part due to negative advertisements that crop up throughout the year. He pledged to take the high road and not run any negative ads against his opponents. My kids and my wife, and I think it's a little sad, I mean, so we go through, and I'm not talking about anybody specifically, but 
We go through a year where people do a really good job of talking about their plans for the future. And you think, that's right. We can do that. We can do that as a country. <clears throat> I believe in that person. I think they're going to go get that done. And then all of a sudden, in the last 10 days, it's like we're in some sort of a terrible action adventure movie where people can just rip off their masks and there's an alien underneath there. Right? And they start spewing this terrible bio. And you turn on the TV. Said the idea of politics is not to cause negativity, but rather to make the world a better place. He also incorporated family into his speech and how essential that can be to finding success in life. So close to everything to my wife and I, and all it is is every day is hassle. And so if you're focused in the moment of saying no to the cookie, it just seems terrible. But if you just take a step back and you think about this unbelievable connection, this unbelievable love, these lessons that you're helping to build, it's the ultimate. speech, we took a minute with Dusty for a quick interview, getting his insight on topics like states' rights regarding medicinal and recreational marijuana. Rights of the states to legalize, decriminalize, and regulate medicinal and or recreational marijuana, why or why not? Yeah, I mean, there's a, a pretty clear role in the Constitution for the federal government to regulate interstate commerce, but the federal government's jurisdiction is a lot smaller when you start to talk about uh, just uh, simply intrastate commercial activity. And so um, this is still an area where we're clearly doing a lot of evolution. Um, we're going to learn a lot from the Colorado, Washington, Oregon experience. I think some of the data has been um, not all that supportive of decriminalization. Some of the data might be uh, more supportive. But I think we're going to be able to see, you know, through the data from the experiment of those states, um, what's going to happen, and I think that's going to instruct what we can do as a country in the future. Thanks, me. On Wednesday morning, Boy Staters joined for their fifth General Assembly in the JFAC Theater for a chance to learn about local government from Rachel Kipley, and also about Boys Nation from delegates Oscar Kavanaugh and Nathaniel Peckis. Kicking off the assembly, NSU Choir Director Dr. Tim Woods had the Boy Staters rehearse the Boy State song and Anchors Away. According to Dr. Woods, this is the finest group he has had in 20 years. Following Dr. Woods, Brown County Commissioner Rachel Kipley talked about the responsibilities of local government, including funding the Brown County Fair, which requires a budget of a million dollars and the responsibility of earning that money back. The local government is also in charge of managing dispatch, 4-H, roads, bridges, landfill, and the auditor's office. Boy Staters also asked Kipley about which roads get fixed and if she has a term limit as county commissioner. In her responses, Kipley explained that roads are fixed based on the amount of their traffic and as county commissioner, she has no term limit. Kipley was also asked if she was planning on campaigning for a higher position in government, but she replied that she is content with her current position. Delegates Oscar Kavanaugh and Nathaniel Peckis from Boys Nation talked about their tour of Washington, including humbling trips to the National Cemetery and the Vietnam War Memorial. Kavanaugh and Peckis also conversed with Congress members Christy Nome and John Thune and met with President Donald Trump, which was an in-depth political experience. Thanks, Kendall. We will now go to Adam Terbeck with his interview of Boys State 75th Annual Governor Bridger Gordon. 2017 Boys State Governor Bridger Gordon is back again this year to fulfill his role as an elected official. So as Boys State Governor, one of my main responsibilities is to come back this year, which is, is the year after I was elected, and to help and advise the Boys Staters of, of this year's event. And so I've had a lot of fun with that and really getting to know the boys that are running for governor or just the boys in general as they get involved and learn more about state and local government. Gordon's short time as governor has taught him important skills for his future. I would say the, the best learning experience I've had is the experiences I've had with the other boys, really talking with them and networking and learning about them. That's taught me personally the social and communication skills, but it's also taught me a lot about other people's perspectives, about politics, about the world, and about Boy State. Despite his commitment to the role of governor, Gordon is not interested in running for political office. I, I don't really think that politics is for me, but I think that it's very important for everyone to learn about government because um, even if you don't want to run for an office, um, you are going to be a citizen, and so it's good to be a citizen that is involved and engaged in the political process. Back at home, Gordon is heavily involved with the Future Farmers of America. 
Uh, my involvement in FFA really taught me a lot of the skills that I've used in Boy State and other activities. Um, it taught me about hard work, it taught me about dedication, it taught me about motivation, and so I've learned a lot from FFA. To his fellow Boy Staters, Gordon has this to say. You can either not get involved and this will be the longest week of your life or you can get involved and it'll, it'll fly by, it'll be so much fun. And so I think it's very important that you get involved, um, run for offices, talk to your other Boy Staters, get to know them, and just have a great time. I'm Adam Turbeck with Boy State News. Back to you, Riley. Thanks, Adam. Up next, we have Hal Lamb with coverage over the Nationalist Party Convention. On Wednesday afternoon, the Nationalist Party held its convention at the JFAC to nominate its candidate for Thursday's election. The Nationalists elected Isaac Olson as their party candidate for governor. The Nationalist Party also unveiled their platform for we're saying the nationalist platform for what we're going to stand by and run on. How will this be resolved? Uh, we're going to vote as long as we need to to get it all figured out. On their educational platform, the national decided that the history of disco will be taught in school. Some members were also fizz up about schools providing Mountain Dew. However, that motion was quickly canned. When it came to the party's views on social issues, tensions were high when the debate about legalization of marijuana lit up at the Nationalist Party. The party eventually decided that they will not whack the weed. <laughs> the most heated debate by far was that whether the boys should not work on Saturday or work on Saturday. However, the convention decided that boys must work on Saturday to make sure Saturdays are for the boys. On the issue of public safety, the party decided that they will increase funding for police officers. Gun-free zones will be allowed, and they will use the budget for the police officers to determine that they will protect themselves. The only point that had an agriculture platform was to reduce regulation on the new farmers. The party's gears were spinning with the idea of transportation. The wheel on the bus will no longer go round and round. Since the National Party decided that all buses will be replaced with hydropower buses. Yes, that means the wheel and the wipers will not be going swish, swish, swish. That's one small step for man. One long elevator right for mankind. Since the Nationalist Party plans to, on building a giant elevator to space, into the International Space Station. For Boys News, I'm Hal Lamb. I will see you later. Thanks, Hal. We appreciate it. The National Party pro sounded pretty intense, Riley, but there's also another party at work. Wednesday night was concluded with the Federalist Convention. Federalist Party members hailing from cities around the state were directed to JFAC Room 181 to nominate fellow members for higher offices including the Attorney General, Secretary of State, Auditor, Treasurer, School of Public Lands, Public Utilities, and Governor. The nomination for Governor was close at a seven vote difference for, but Seamus Duffy represented the Federalist Party at the state level. As we found out earlier, Duffy emerged victorious in the state election and will be our 2018 Boys State Governor. Concluding our broadcast, we have executive producer Garrett Satterley covering the accusations against Chris McKinney. Over the last few days, Boys Staters have come together as a whole to protest personal trainer Chris McKinney and his harsh morning exercises. Boys Staters first met McKinney when they attended Tuesday's morning flag ceremony. Some say McKenney was harsh in over-abusing his powers as the Boys State fitness leader. Crooked Chris McKenney. Now, I assure you that his content is more corrupted than Hillary Clinton's hard drive. To defend himself, we met up with McKenney following last night's state political convention. It, uh, it hurts. It hurts. Uh, when I came here, I'm... I, I was really excited to, you know, make an impact and, you know, 
help out, spread the spread the joys of physical fitness, and have everybody live a little bit healthier lifestyle. I guess some could say I care too I care too much. Non-political candidates for Supreme Court addressed this matter in their candidate speech earlier today. After hearing what possible punishment may be, we met back up with McKenney to get his reaction. It's just it's overwhelming. It's uh it's frustrating. It's it's not fair. Will crooked Chris McKenney be prosecuted? It's up to you. I'm Garrett Satterley, Boy State News. That's all we have for today. Join us next time for results from the Boy State Olympics. Be sure to check out our Boy State Facebook page as well as our Twitter and also use the hashtag SDBoyState. Also to make sure to use the geo filter on Snapchat. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next time on Boy State News.